This patient underwent successful LASIK surgery for nearsightedness about seven years prior. Unfortunately, she got poked in the eye, which dislocated her LASIK flap. This was surgically replaced, but she had epithelial cells grow underneath the flap. Over the next several months, these epithelial cells grew and grew until they began causing significant decrease in the vision. Here, they're entering the visual axis and causing damage to the flap and required removal. In surgery, first I identify the area where the cells are most involved, which is at the upper left-hand part of this video. I very easily, in this case, open up the edge of the flap because there is significant epithelial ingrowth preventing good flap adherence. There is a nasal hinge at the right side of this video. Here, the Sinsky hook is again used to open up the edge of the flap for as much of the flap as I can because I'm planning to lift up the entire flap in this case to remove large degrees of epithelial ingrowth. I then take a psychoanalysis spatula and lift up the flap. I am very, very careful to indent the cornea posteriorly or to press on it so that I do not poke a hole in the flap. It's very easy if you lift up the tip of the spatula to poke a hole in the flap, which is needless to say, not desirable. Once the entire flap has been mobilized, I can lift it up and out of the way. There are significant epithelial ingrowth cells on the body of the cornea or the corneal stroma. Here I'm lifting them up with a Wexel cellulose sponge. Remember, there are also cells on the underside of the flap which I will need to take care of once I've taken care of the cells on the body of the cornea. Here I'm using a sharp blade to aggressively remove the cells from the stromal side of the cornea. I also remove the intact epithelium from the peripheral edge of the flap going a little bit past the flap edge. This allows the flap to adhere better with less chance of recurrent epithelial ingrowth. Again, I'm very aggressive to try and remove all the cells from the stromal surface. On the underside of the flap edge, I need to be more careful so as not to damage the LASIK flap. Here too, however, I am very carefully but fairly aggressively trying to remove all epithelial cells from the underside of the flap. It's especially important to do it at the edge of the flap where the epithelial cells seem to be most adherent. It's often difficult to tell when you've removed all the cells. But ideally, it looks nice and smooth at the end. Here I've removed the cells from both sides and I'm going to return the flap to its original position. I irrigate under the flap to remove any residual cells and hopefully keep it nice and clean and free from any debris. I then try and lay the flap down in excellent position. And typically, with a case like this, I will place numerous sutures and tightly suture them to secure the flap edge to decrease the chance of recurrent epithelial cells growing underneath the flap. I tend to tie these sutures rather tightly, again, to secure the flap edge to decrease the chance of cells growing underneath. I put one suture in and here's a second suture and I will eventually put in about 14 sutures. Here's a photograph of the patient's eye about one week after surgery. The sutures are in good position. I've taken half of the sutures out about six weeks after surgery and there's no evidence of epithelial ingrowth. Here's the patient about three months after surgery, after which I've taken all the sutures out and there's no epithelial ingrowth. 